USS Galena, a ship I've previously described as possibly the worst ironclad to ever put to sea, and that's when the competition includes HMS Captain. So, am I justified? Well, let's take a look. As mentioned in the video on the Battle of Hampton Roads, Galena was one of three ironclads authorised in response to the CSS Virginia, the other two of course being USS Monitor and the USS New Ironsides. The requirements of the US Navy were perhaps the simplest they've ever issued for a ship design exercise. The ship had to be an ironclad, steam-powered vessel of war, and it had to float, despite being armoured, which is a useful feature on warships in most cases. The design would also have to be reviewed by a naval officer once it had been finalised. With the USS Monitor's design being accepted at the last minute, it was actually Galena and New Ironsides who were the original winners out of over a dozen submissions. In its first design form, Galena was supposed to be 162 foot long and displace 800 tonnes, rendering it a relatively small warship otherwise rated as a corvette. The armour was supposed to be 2.5 inches of iron plate, then 1.5 inches of rubber, and then 18 inches of wood, which would make up the hull itself. The rubber was not there to bounce shot back, unfortunately, but rather worked on a theory that was prevailing at the time that it would help absorb iron splinters from the armour if the armour was penetrated, and would also help seal any damage from shots that breached the protection, as it would ideally rip or tear in allowing the passage of the shot, and then fold itself back together behind the projectile, thus mostly sealing the breach. However, this design was substantially altered, increasing the ship's length to 180 feet, adding 4 foot to the beam and 2 foot to the draft, and this all increased displacement by 150 tonnes to just under 1,000 tonnes. The hull design also changed. Three masts were reduced to two, and the sides of the hull were significantly sloped in above the water, a so-called tumble-home design that would later be heavily expressed in French pre-dreadnoughts. Tumble home is supposed to make ships more stable by reducing weight above the waterline, but can also paradoxically make them more prone to rolling, and actually more likely to capsize when flooding ensues below the waterline. The armour scheme was also revised, with the rubber layer replaced with another just over half inch of additional iron. The size increase was due to concerns over the ability of the ship's hull to stay afloat with the additional weight of the armour and this further increase in weight due to the replacement of rubber with iron led to the armour thickness being varied across the ship instead of being uniform, with protection heaviest around the gun battery and thinned toward the ends of the ship, particularly around the stern. A lot of confusion surrounds perceptions on exactly how this armour was to be applied, with some claiming that she was entirely covered in railway line irons, but the most reliable sources I've found seem to indicate that she was actually protected by armour plates made up of multiple sheets half an inch thick, which would have reduced the overall effectiveness of the armour below even the relatively thin overall uh, width already indicated. These would then be held in place by a grid of iron rails that resembled, or even possibly were, railroad track that had been inverted to create a kind of T, or slightly wonky capital I shape, which would then in theory hold the plates in place using these flanges. Of course, multiple drawings can be found that show all sorts of different layouts for Galena's armour, so as I said, this is only the best I could approximate from what appear to be the most reliable sources. A single propeller used 800 horsepower to drive the ship at 8 knots under steam, with the sails available for long distance cruising or combined power propulsion. In this format, Galena would prove to roll quite heavily in ocean swell conditions, albeit that, like Monitor and New Ironsides, she was primarily designed for coastal work. Weapons consisted of a pair of 6.4 inch or 100 pound parrot rifles fore and aft, both designations being in use at the time, and these could pivot to fire on either side. A further four 9 inch Dahlgren guns in more conventional broadside mountings completed the armament for a maximum broadside of two guns of each type per side, or four guns total. <laughs> 
The ship was laid down in 1861 and launched on the 14th of February 1862, followed by commission into the Union Navy a couple of months later on the 21st of April 1862. It was immediately assigned to join the Hampton Roads blockade fleet. Initial signs seemed to be promising. Virginia was still present, but was not attacking the reinforced Union forces. An expedition up the James River resulted in no damage to the ship apart from some minor issues encountered when the ship ran aground and needed to be freed. Along with other Union ironclads, including Monitor, she therefore approached Drury's Bluff on the 15th of May 1862. The Confederate battery present was considered too dangerous for the two wooden ships in the squadron to engage in close action, and sources disagree as to whether or not Monitor's turret could elevate its guns high enough to engage the Confederate guns, which were mounted at the top of the bluff, hence the name. Galena sailed up to about 600 yards range, dropped anchor, and opened fire. Three hours later, with almost her entire ammunition stock expended, she had managed to inflict a total of 15 casualties on the Confederate forces, seven killed and eight wounded. In return, however, the battery, which was not the heaviest of the Confederates' fortifications, had hit her nearly four dozen times, of which just over a dozen had punched right through her armoured sides, and three others had managed to knock her large holes in the deck. Her own casualties were almost double that inflicted on the Confederate forces, with 13 killed and 11 wounded for a total of 24. Monitor was also hit repeatedly, but her great protection meant that she survived the encounter without much issue. The other ironclad present, a somewhat armoured, semi-submersible US Treasury cutter on loan to the Navy, and there's a combination of words you didn't think you'd ever hear, had had one of its guns explode and so the entire squadron withdrew downriver, rather the worse for wear. The battered Galena would then cover a general withdrawal down the river and defend Union shipping for the rest of the year, with patchwork repairs keeping the water out, on the theory that even a damaged ironclad with relatively poor protection was better than nothing in the face of the growing Confederate ironclad fleet. But by early 1863, enough additional ironclads, mostly monitors, had arrived and she was sent back to port for repairs. With her armour judged to be almost entirely ineffectual, and the ship being considered liable to be at risk of being sent into situations she would not survive, simply on the basis of being an ironclad, with the local commanders likely being unaware of the failings in her armour, the bulk of the protection was stripped away, except for some remaining armour around the engines. The third mast was brought back in, and the weight saved by ditching the armour went into an increased battery, doubling the 9-inch Dahlgren armament to 8 at the expense of one of the Parrot rifles, for a total broadside now of 5 guns. The hull was also altered along something more like conventional sloop lines. She would then resume duties as a more conventional blockade ship, hanging back with other wooden ships and chasing blockade runners, whilst the ironclad forces of both sides clashed with each other and various shore batteries repeatedly. Her next major action would come as part of the Battle of Mobile Bay, where she and other wooden ships were assigned to block any escape of Confederate wooden warships from the guns of the U Union Monitor Squadron that was leading the attack. Tied to the USS Oneida for engine redundancy, the two ships came under fire from shore batteries and the ironclad CSS Tennessee. The decision to tie the wooden ships together in pairs proved to be a wise one when Oneida's starboard boiler was knocked out. Various other blockade and bombardment duties would see out her role in the American Civil War, but she would not last long beyond it, with her cumulative damage and the long period between incurring her initial damage and repairs actually being made in full, meaning that her condition was quite poor and she was condemned in 1870 before being broken up in 1872. Thus would end the career of USS Galena, the only ironclad ever built where, after one battle, it was decided her protection was worse than useless and she was returned to a more conventional life. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.